Hi, I'm Joe Alton, MD, also known as Dr. Bones of doomandbloom.net, where you'll find close to 700 articles, videos, and podcasts on medical preparedness for any disaster. Together with my wife, Amy Alton, a nurse practitioner, we're the co-authors of the three-category number one Amazon bestseller, The Survival Medicine Handbook, a guide for when medical help is not on the way. Also, the New York Times bestseller, the Ebola Survival Handbook, and even the designers of a board game, Doom and Bloom Survival, a great way to get the whole gang together to put down those smartphones and have a fun and challenging family night. As the U.S. enters summer, we can expect hot temperatures to bake parts of the country. The state of Arizona recently had a record-breaking heat wave that has seen temperatures of 115 degrees Fahrenheit. In other news, the country of India has experienced a killer heat wave as well that has taken at last count more than 2,300 lives. Although you don't often hear these events called natural disasters, heat-related illness is responsible for more deaths yearly than hurricanes and tornadoes. A heat wave that blasted Europe, as a matter of fact, in 2003 caused 71,000 fatalities. In disaster settings, the loss of power can lead to major medical issues relating to heat. In an off-grid scenario, you may find yourself without shelter to protect you from the elements. If you haven't prepared to deal with the weather, you have made the environment your enemy, and you can be certain that it's a formidable one. Medical issues related to excessive heat are collectively known as hyperthermia. These include muscle cramps, otherwise known as heat cramps, Muscle spasm as a result of exertion in a hot environment. Calves, thighs, and shoulders are most often affected. Heat cramps may be caused by loss of elements called electrolytes in sweat, such as sodium, potassium, magnesium, and calcium. These are not replenished simply by drinking plain water. As a matter of fact, this issue is the main reason for the development of electrolyte-rich sports drinks like Gatorade. Fainting, otherwise known as heat syncope. Blood vessels in the periphery of your body, for example, arms and legs, open up, they dilate, in hot weather, causing less blood flow to the brain, and the result can be a short-lived loss of consciousness. Heat exhaustion. Often associated with dehydration in a hot environment, heat exhaustion is a group of symptoms due to an increased body core temperature. If untreated, it can lead to heat stroke. Heat stroke is characterized by worsening symptoms and it's caused by a body core temperature of over 105 degrees Fahrenheit. Life-threatening if not treated quickly. The risk of heat-related illness corresponds strongly to the heat index, a measurement of the effects of air temperature combined with high humidity. Above 60% relative humidity, loss of heat by perspiration is impaired, increasing the chances of heat-related illness. Exposure to full sun increases the reported heat index by as much as 10 to 15 degrees Fahrenheit. Besides the heat index, a number of other factors make a person more prone to heat-related illness. Age, the very young and the very old are most likely to be the first victims. Health status, those with chronic illnesses like diabetes, heart issues, lung disease, these are prime candidates for heat stroke. So are those who are carrying a significant amount of extra weight. Exercise. Athletes and members of the military often find themselves exerting themselves in hot weather and must guard against heat-related illnesses. The same goes for workers who wear heavy personal protection gear. Lack of acclimation. People that aren't used to hot weather are especially sensitive to heat stroke. Heat waves cause a jump in heat-related emergencies. Location. Urban environments have what we call a heat island effect, where asphalt and concrete store up heat, making days and nights hotter. And medications. Certain medicines affect your ability to stay hydrated and your response to heat. Some blood pressure medications, diuretics, antihistamines, even some psychiatric drugs may predispose you to heat stroke. Alcohol and caffeine are drugs also and should be avoided. Climate control. Modern air conditioning goes a long way towards decreasing the risk of heat stroke. I wonder how we did without it. Municipalities in many areas will issue advisories during extreme weather. During a heat wave, they may announce an excessive heat watch. That means conditions are favorable for an event to meet or exceed excessive heat warning criteria in the next 12 to 48 hours. An excessive heat warning. 
That means that heat values are forecast to meet or exceed locally defined warning criteria for at least two days. And then the heat advisory. That means hazardous heat conditions have begun or will begin within 36 hours. If caution is not exercised, they could become life-threatening. Heat-related emergencies run the spectrum from mild to severe illness, and failure to recognize one in time may lead to a tragic outcome. In part two of our heat stroke video, we'll talk about the difference between heat stroke and heat exhaustion and give you some key pointers on diagnosis, treatment, and prevention. This is Joe Alden at Old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health and good times or bad. Thanks for watching.